So one thing that's been on my mind a lot lately is this idea of finding inspiration for our photography and whether or not this is strictly an active process or if this can also be a passive process as well. When we're looking at some of our favorite photographers' work, we're often studying the things that we find the most inspiring or the most interesting about their work. Whether that be the subject matter, the light, the composition, whatever it may be, those are the things that we really gravitate towards because it's what catches our interest and it's maybe the kind of thing that we want to implement in our own work as we're actually out there shooting ourselves. But what I've really been studying and just trying to figure out over the last few months is just this idea of the photography that we see on any given day that we're not actually sitting down to study. All of those photos that we're seeing are those influencing our own photography subconsciously. When you think about all the photography that you see on any given day, it's probably a lot more than you actually realize. Whether you're sitting down with a photo book and you're actually trying to study photography, or if you're just scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, watching a YouTube video, maybe you're flipping through a newspaper or a magazine, which I'm sure there are still some people doing that. Or even if you're just watching a movie or a TV show and you're picking up all of the lighting and the way that they frame each shot, all of these little things can kind of feed into our influences and our inspiration for photography, whether or not we're actually realizing that. I've sort of been looking at this like a diet because you can work out every day of the week, but if you're eating like crap, you're not really giving your body what it needs to thrive, so you're not really going to see the results you want. Similarly, I think studying the photography and the work that inspires you the most can definitely translate into the work you make yourself, but if you're not being selective about the photography that you consume, how much of that is subconsciously influencing your photos? Another way to think about this is Facebook. I'm sure if you're on Facebook, you have that one friend or maybe even family member that shares way too much than they really should. They like to air out their dirty laundry or start drama with people. Those are the kind of people I like to politely mute on my Facebook feed, so that way I don't have to see it because I have enough things to think about on any given day. The last thing I need to see is somebody's relationship drama. Now, I've had Instagram for many, many years, and the list of people that I follow has grown so much over the years, and some of those accounts probably aren't even in use anymore. Some of the people I followed years ago for their photography, they're not even into photography anymore. It's changed a lot over the years. And to this day, there are still amazing photographers on there that I follow and that I genuinely find inspiration from just through seeing their work on Instagram. And that's the only way I've consumed their photography, but it's inspiring to me. But just for the sake of studying this and basically treating this as an experiment, I've started muting people on my feed just so I can try and curate the kind of photos that I see on a daily basis just to see how that influences what I make myself. Now, I know some people take this sort of thing to heart and they can get really offended by this. You know, if you don't want to follow me, that's perfectly fine. I totally understand. But I know some people even use like third party apps to see who unfollows them and it will send them a notification and let them know. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, so I just use the mute feature on Instagram so that way I don't have to worry about it. And also, some of these people, there are people I genuinely care about. It's just that I'm trying to see what it would be like using Instagram strictly as a place to look for inspiration in photography and nothing else. So it's just an experiment. This might be a good way to do that for yourself. But again, you know, you can also just unfollow people. Just know some people really take that uh, to heart. <laughs> Now, as we've talked about these a lot on the channel, I think photo books are definitely the best way to consume photography just because of the intention behind it. I know there's the whole romantic idea of holding a tangible thing in your hand and all of that. I get that. I feel the same way, but I think just the intention behind sitting down with a photo book is what makes it so effective, especially if you're on your phone and you're scrolling through somebody's Instagram feed. As inspiring as some of those photos may be, there's always the possibility of a notification popping up, all of these other distractions, things that are basically trying to grab your attention. The idea with a photo book is that you can sit down, not have anything else grab your attention, and just focus on the photography that you specifically sought out to sit down and study. Obviously, there's amazing photography being posted all over the place every single day, and there's no right or wrong way to consume photography. This is just something that I've been thinking about a lot over the last few months, and I wanted to share it with you guys to start the conversation. I just think if we be a little bit more intentional and a little bit more mindful, that's probably going to help us in the long run when it comes to making our own photos. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments below. Obviously, these are just my thoughts, so I'd love to hear from you. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, the easiest way to do so is just by subscribing. Also, if you'd like to check out the Patreon page, I'm going to put a link in the description. That is a huge, huge help as I'm now going full-time on YouTube. So huge thanks to everybody already over there on Patreon and everybody that's been supporting the channel all these years. 
cannot thank you enough. So again, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this whole conversation. And that's it for today. So I want to thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.